Hi friends, now at DAMS we have initiated a series called as Unplugged. In this series we try to integrate various aspects of you know clinical medicine with the basic sciences. So we all know by now that mammography is one of the most important screening tests for breast malignancy. And the finding that we are looking for during screening by mammography is called as ductal carcinoma in C2. And the most important descriptor that we use to show you malignancy in a screening patient is called as microcalcification. So today we will discuss that why do we see microcalcification and why a certain kind of calcification would indicate malignancy and we will try to correlate the radiological image with the pathological image. Now at the outset only I want you to know that most of the calcifications that you would see on a mammogram would be benign. It is important to know when to think of malignancy. And second thing to remember is that do not be shy of taking a magnification view, a routine CC MLO view that we do. Sometimes you may not be able to characterize calcification properly, so you may have to do a magnification view to look at the kind of magnification that you see on the textbooks. So the key thing is that we are going to look at some patterns. And these patterns will be described by two sub-parameters. And this will determine how we speak when we look at a radiological image. We will look at the distribution and we will look at the morphology. And this distribution and morphology will tell us am I looking at a benign pattern of calcification or a malignant pattern of calcification. And we will try to make a you know, idea on how and why it is happening pathologically. So you can see in front of you this is a mammogram image. In this mammogram image I am sure you can point out you can see the calcification. Is it a diffuse or a scattered kind of calcification? No, it is more localized. So keep it in mind, diffuse, scattered calcifications are usually benign. But ones which are in a cluster like we see in this patient or ones which are segmental or ones which are linear or branching are more likely to be malignant. So this is where we see a clustered or a localized calcification. And the second thing to remember is the morphology. When we look at these calcifications, there are three kind of morphologies that you come to your mind. Is it a rounded nodule or is it a more amorphous where you cannot make out the edges of the calcification or is it more pleomorphic? So round, when we go from round to amorphous to pleomorphic, this is how we, the increasing suspicion of malignancy happens. When we see something rounded, rounded calcification, we think of more benign, while amorphous would have intermediate concern, and something which is more pleomorphic, like you see in this image, is of more of concern. Let me show you another picture. Now another of the microcalcification patterns that is of worrisome to you is this one. And you can see this is clearly linear branching pattern of microcalcification. And these are the words which make us more suspicious. Pleomorphic, fine calcification, uh, lean, fine linear branching calcification. This is where we think of ductal carcinoma in C2. While if you look at calcification pattern which is more diffuse, scattered, we are looking at more benign. And the words like segmental distribution, clustered, pleomorphic morphology, would fine morphology would make you think of malignancy. So these are the two parameters that we look for. And now, you know, my goal today is to make sure that you really understand why and how of it, why this is happening. And, you know, how to look for it in a pathology slide. So we'll, we'll try to correlate the radiological picture with the pathological image in this uh, today's session. Along with it, I want you to know mammography is one of the most important screening tools for breast cancer. And, and today, you know, in 2019, American Society for Breast Surgeons have come up with a guideline where they, have, uh, they say that all women more than 40 years of age should undergo an annual mammogram for screening for breast cancer. And that is what ACR also recommends. So these are important things. You will see them as an undergraduate in your exams, as a postgraduate in your exams. So we need to understand the why behind it. And the why behind it lies in the histology. To explain the histology, I will invite Dr. Ranjit to you know, talk about it and give us an insight on why and how of it. What is it that he is seeing on a slide and why and how it is translating into a mammographic image. Uh, good no good day friends so we have seen the mammogram picture of how it's going to look of a benign lesion and a suspicion and a malignant lesion so now just let's correlate why there's a microcalcification why it's why 
a radiologist is going to think of a malignancy when there's a microcalcification, right? So let's go with a normal breast histology. As you all know, a normal breast histology is made of terminal ductal lobular units. When you look at this, this is a duct and this entire thing is going to be lobular. This is how a normal breast looks, the terminal duct as well as the lobular unit, right? And if you see the origin of a lesion in breast, from the terminal ductal lobular units is where the DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ, the invasive ductal carcinomas, the carcinomas come from this. The fibroadenoma come from the stromas. Fillots come from predominantly from the stroma. But when I look at a tumor, it's going to come from the terminal duct lobular units. This is how a terminal duct lobular unit looks. Just correlate this with the normal uh, mammogram which, which you saw. Just now you saw calcification in the mammogram. It looks similar to this, right? A linear and tiny, tiny speckled fine calcifications. When this terminal duct lobular units undergoes a neoplastic change, let's consider a ductal carcinoma in situ. In that, you must have heard of comedo ductal carcinoma in situ, right? There's a variant of ductal carcinoma in situ. I'm just going to show you the ductal carcinoma in situ slide. It's going to look like this. So the entire terminal ductal lobular units has become big. See, I can see a few ducts here. You can see a group of ducts here and we can see a group of ducts there. So we are having different, different terminal, the lobules, the everything lobules has become bigger. That's neoplastic change. It's going to just become bigger. When I look at the center of the neoplastic change, exactly the, where the arrow marks are being pointed, the picture looks pink in color, right? The entire pink in color. We just zoom it up a bit. We just zoom the three tiny, tiny lobules, which had the neoplastic change. Look at the center of every of the lobe, each of the lobule. It looks pink in color. Any tissue is going to be pink for me is going to be necrotic, which means there's no blue color. No nucleus, it's a dead cell. If you recollect the first chapter of pathology, general pathology, any cell or any tissue is undergoing, going to undergo necrosis will have excess of calcium. It's a chronic process, not a single day process. Excess of calcium for a long duration is going to accumulate calcium deposit. It's going to form calcification. Now let's just see that all these tiny areas, this, this, as well as that, all the tiny area will have speckles of calcification. You can look at that picture. Right? You can see the dark blue color. Those are calcific deposits. Now let's imagine the same thing. I'm going to the previous slide. The same thing happening in all these tiny, tiny lobules, which have become neoplastic. When all of them become neoplastic, all of them are going to have tiny, tiny calcifications. When you project that, we'll just go to the mammogram picture, which just you now Dr. Sumesh has so told, right? When I project that, it's going to look like this. It's going to be tiny, tiny calcifications through the duct, as well as everything in the lobule. When I see tiny calcifications, I'm going to think of an abnormal tissue because abnormal tissue is going to have cal necrosis inside the duct and lobules. They are tiny. When I'm going to zoom it out into a gross picture, it's going to look very, very fine calcifications. That's why when I see a fine calcification, we generally think of a suspicious lesion in a mammogram. Let's see how the calcification look when it's a benign lesion. Because when you see a mammogram in a benign lesion, we are just going to say, a macro calcification is suggestive of a benign lesion, right? I'll show you a picture that's of fat necrosis. We'll see the extent of calcification in that. There's a benign lesion, a completely fat necrosis. Look at the calcification. Definitely it's florid. Compare this calcification with the comedo necrotic in the center of the duct in case of DCS. When I zoom this out, it'll become big. They won't be fine. So when I see a fine calcification in a mammogram, it correlates to the necrotic calcification in case of a DCIS. When you see a coarse calcification in a mammogram, it's going to correlate to a benign lesion. This is a simplification of how what I'm going to see in microscopy is going to reflect in the mammogram, right? Thank you for your time and thank you for listening to the Radiopath series and stay tuned for more such interesting series and correlation between the basic science and the clinical diagnosis. All the best. Bye-bye.